So with TRX40 coming out, I decided I wanted to bring back the RIP-J stuff because it'd be fun to bring it back with some new hardware. And the 3970X actually does really well in Time Spy Extreme even. So I want to use that, and I want to set it all up to do a stream. I could put it all under liquid nitrogen and just end it right now. But I want to give Jay a chance. So we're going to start as basic as possible with just normal water and then hopefully move through the, the steps we did like with the Intel stuff previously. The problem is, I've got Patrick here to help me with this. Uh, when I went to turn all of this on and use, we can pan over to this setup, use this setup we had previously. This is a Mora 3 radiator, and we've had this hooked up for a couple months now, sitting here. It's had distilled water in it. It hasn't been running, though, and so pretty sure there's not mixed metals in this. I think it is uh, all copper, everything. But either way, just the water sitting there for a while has built up some Pretty, basically, I went to turn on the pump, and we ended up with this. This is a real shame. So these are super nice heat killer blocks by the company Watercool. And they make, um, what do they, do they, is it water cooling parts? I think Watercool makes, anyway, it's really obvious. But they make some of the nicest water cooling hardware we've worked with. And it is not supposed to be... It is not supposed to be black and slightly green. It's supposed to be the color of copper. This is just distilled water, right? There's no no additives or anything yeah. in there. This was only distilled water. We probably could have added like a silver coil or a, a biocide or something. But we just went with pure distilled water. And I think having a biocide probably would have prevented this, but maybe only if the loop were running. Because if it just, I don't know if that stuff, if it just settles or anything. Yeah. Not really sure. And it really has been months. It's since been months. We this on. It's been sitting for months. And I, my, I got it all set up. So I pulled the 3175X board out. I transplanted the Threadripper TRX40 board under it. It was ready to go. And went as far as turning the pump on. And as soon as I did some, we can get a shot of this too, some corrosion colored. Debris floated up to uh, floated up to the top of the. Yeah, it's a little bit pink. Yeah, <laughs> it's like pinkish orange. There's a piece right there on this side. I'm trying to get it over towards you. It looks like fish food. <laughs> Have you ever had fish? Yeah. It looks like fish food. That tube's been uncovered, but not for most of the time that this yes. bench has been sitting here. The top of the reservoir was uncovered for a bit. But the thing is, too, I would, any like dust or like just debris that floated in here, there's like a mile of tubes we have hooked up to this thing. It would have had to, it's not been on, so the dust would have had to like get down here, travel up without a pump, and then like through this complex pump body and then out. And so whatever happened, it happened in the video card block itself from probably stuff that was already in the water. But anyway, uh, we're going to have to take all this apart. The goal is to clean it with our ultrasonic cleaner, and I don't know how well these work for this. It works pretty well for getting Vaseline off of boards, and that's pretty stuck on there, so I'm hoping that this works well. But, I mean, Patrick, do you want to explain briefly to the extent of our knowledge how these work? Uh, the extent of our knowledge, based on like 10 minutes of Wikipedia research, is uh, first off, this is a heated ultrasonic cleaner, so we put the parts in there and the water gets up to... 80 is the max. There's controls on the front. 80 Celsius, which, especially with Vaseline, uh, helps a lot, just even on its own. Yeah, um, it loosens it. Uh, but then there's, uh, I guess, a buzzer in there that makes ultrasonic vibrations and it creates tiny... Uh, Cav bubbles, cavitation bubbles, cavitation bubbles uh, on the surface of the object that's being cleaned, and those bubbles um, collapse really violently uh, at like a microscopic level, I guess, yeah. and blast dirt off the surface. Yeah, it like dislodges the material that's in there. So we can control temperature on this one. This is one of the. It's the biggest that we could buy on Amazon. You can special order larger ones, but this fits pretty much every motherboard unless it's like XL. ATX fits fine. ATX in the is fine. EATX probably not, but 
anyway, um, we can control the temperature. We can control. They've got these. Uh, let's see, where is it? These options for full wave and semi wave. It, I think full wave makes it significantly louder. It's a really high pitched frequency. Buzzes. It actually gives me a headache if I'm within a few feet of it when it's running. So it's pretty bad in terms of being near it. Uh, Degas, I think cycles, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it like turns on and off. Yeah, um, so it turns that high frequency noise on and off. And uh, then you can set a time limit too. So anyway, we bought this a while ago and it's worked pretty well, but we're gonna try and put these in here. I know everyone's done, like my water block got corrosion and nasty in it. Uh, Bitwit just tweeted about one of his water blocks actually getting destroyed by corrosion. It was, we can pull a, a photo from Twitter or something, but he was actually missing like pieces of the micro fins. You could see the, the exposed copper under what used to be nickel coated, I think, nickel plated. And so everyone's done cleaning videos, but we're gonna try and do it without actually getting our hands dirty because that's gross and I don't want to touch it. So we're just gonna pull the blocks off and submerge them in distilled water and then add this, which a viewer recommended to us. And I, I don't remember who it was, but it was in a stream and feel free to leave your comment below. But this is a Branson EC or electric or electronics cleaner, I think is what that stands for. Formulated cleaning. It's got an anger warning on the side. So not, We'll see what we've gotten ourselves into. Don't drink it. <laughs> Don't drink it. Uh, anyway, our viewer in the stream recommended three to four percent of this versus distilled water for the rest. We're gonna give it a shot. So first step is to pull everything apart though. And hopefully this will be the easy way to clean your water blocks. Well, there's a chance that that block isn't Bad. the same way that this one is. Too. Yeah. So we'll find out. And I had forgotten these are 2080 Ti blocks. So we do have other 2080 Ti blocks. If we can't use these, I can still do the competition. But I'm hoping we can recover these and water cool, I am so sorry. But it's a casualty of war. Uh, also, unfortunately, we probably will need to clean out the Mora radiator and everything else too. We do also have another water cool 2080 Ti block, so. Okay. You don't need to be that sorry. Cool, I'm not sorry, it's okay. Um, we can leave that stuff on, because okay. we're, we're not gonna put these in the but do we need to take, we need to take these? Oh out? yeah, any, okay. any screws. We have a Lego bucket from 1998. This is my personal Lego bucket. I'm gonna use this to drain all of the liquid into. And then I'll, I'll pull it back up into the camera shot so we can see if it's disgusting. Oh, I was doing it, like making this the high point so that the one you're holding is oh, the gotcha. low point. Okay. There it goes. Nothing nasty yet because it's all stuck to the metal. Oh, it looks like. This will just make a pile of screws. I guess we should clarify that none of this is supposed to be black. No, that's, <laughs> yeah. I said that earlier, but we yeah. should say it again. That, that was like copper color. And I mean, you can see like the kind of oily look on some of it too. If you want the stuff we're using, as always, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net and pick up the toolkit we've got there is for video card assembly, disassembly. So far we've had, we've got the 2.0 Allen that those use, obviously lots of Phillips in the kit, and also the mod mat that we're working on is on the store. Okay. I'm hunting for screws. Yeah. Do you ever have one of those like, uh, kids things where like they would put plastic toys in like a sand like a brick of clay or something oh, yeah, and yeah. you'd like dig for them that's what this feels like, like. the uh kid like anthropologist yeah kid. yeah uh-huh okay if it requires that much force then something's wrong there's another screw up here i think you got it already Let me check your work before i start pulling on mine yeah yeah that's that should come off that easily okay cool oh, there we go Oh, boy. 2.5, nice. GN Toolkit strikes again. Huh. Okay. <laughs> wow. That was unexpected. That was very uneventful. 
Well, that's that's good, right? I mean, news. but god damn it, that means that means I could have left this mostly assembled. I hope I hope this is a precursor to finding out that the only thing that has issues is that one. Um, because cleaning that Mora radiator, I think, is going to be basically impossible. Yes, these are very thin. Um, I can do it. I'm not sure about these. Oh, these are stupid thin. Jesus. Is okay. any of it coming off? A little bit, but not enough that it would be easy to clean. This is encouraging because it means that it might actually make sense to use the ultrasonic cleaner for this. Yeah, that's on there pretty good. I experimented on this one. What? Uh, well, it doesn't just wipe off, so. Okay. It seems like ultrasonic is a good solution. I, I don't know. I think if we put it in with this stuff, it's just gonna, more will transfer onto it then. Oh yeah, I just, I mean, I mean, meant like, assuming this is the same as yeah. that, like, ultrasonic right. is a good choice. So the correct ones are? Yes. Okay. <laughs> now I can't do mine. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna keep the one that works. <laughs> I am really happy that all these tools have been on the toolkit, though. Um, oh, there it is. That's what I was holding it on. Okay. Oh, well, okay. That's yeah. a lot more screws. Yeah. Oh, is that this one? Yeah. yeah. Although we do have another toolkit right there if you need it. Okay. I'll just use my fingernails. Uh, <laughs> So real, yeah, that's right. I got this out with just my bare fingers. <laughs> Elbow joints, I believe, were connected to both cards. Smells a little weird. Yeah, I'm wondering if. It smells like uh, oily. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so not a lot of pickup God. from just wiping it. Um, hmm. So I was Stained. half expecting it to just like wash off when we took the uh, block apart. Yeah, I was wondering if it might be like that um, stuff we saw in the Enermax blocks, like like gross. But this isn't gunk. This is like coloration. Wow, what the hell causes that? Okay, well that one can definitely go in the ultrasonic. We're just draining the rest of the loop. So this water's pretty clear, which is very encouraging. Because I think the mora is basically impossible for us to clean. So uh, I'm tempted to pull the pump apart and double check, but I don't think we have to. It would be smart to try and clean the rest of it. But we, I think we got all, most of it out with the block and with the reservoir being drained into here. Hell of a lot of water though. CPU blocks going in here too? Um, or no, that doesn't seem worth it. Yeah, because half gonna of it has it. electronics on it and then the other half is like not dirty. Okay, I guess I'll face this down. Yeah. I think that's currently closed, just to make sure. Okay, none's coming out. There's a drain on here. So yeah, this is the ultrasonic cleaner you wanna start pouring in. And we're gonna put a couple gallons of water in here, get it filled like at Oops. least halfway. And um, there's a drain on the bottom that we can open and close the valve. And then uh, other than that, I mean, we, we just need enough in here to reduce, well, to, to make sure it works properly. And I don't know, I'm always a little concerned with these from a fire safety standpoint. I don't really know how safe these are, but I know they can definitely catch fire. So I'm not gonna run it when I'm not here, but the general rule is don't use IPA, don't use rubbing alcohol in these. Uh, Kane Pin does, but he was extremely serious when he was, I've never seen him so serious. When he was saying, don't, don't do this. Don't do what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, no, no rubbing alcohol, but 
This is fine. I think four gallons will be more than enough. Yeah, it should be fine. Oh no. I think we can stop there. Now we can always save the rest for um, motherboards later. Ugh, the more we put in there, the longer it takes to heat up, so we're yeah. trying not to fill the entire thing. But it does stay hot, like, forever, <laughs> this thing. It, once I unplug it, sometimes I've had it stay hot till like the next day, if I forget to take the top off of it. Anger. Okay, so we're gonna use, let's see, operating temperature, 130 to 160. Most applications optimized for 140. Well, we're not going that high. Is that Celsius? Fahrenheit. It says optimal is um, 3%. So we could measure it out, or I could just kind of guess. I mean, 3% of four gallons is a very small amount. That's 12% of one gallon. <laughs> Does that help? No. <laughs> it's not going to hurt to have more, unless it's flammable. You have to take a spoonful, taste it, and see. <laughs> Causes severe skin burns and eye damage. May cause respiratory <coughs> irritation. Mm -hmm. All right. That's it, I guess. We can um, turn this thing on. You're revealing to everyone how close our sets are to each other. <laughs> you already know. Oh, gross. My hair just dipped into the thing. <laughs> it's detergent, it cleans. <laughs> okay, so this is how this thing works. Uh, we've got some buttons on front, we have heat, and we have timing. So I'm going to set this up. It takes a while to heat up. Um, we're gonna start with powering it on, and then we're gonna set a temperature. We'll set it to... 55 is where I've run it in the past. I like how the temperature up arrow is on the bottom. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> really annoying actually. Heating, okay. 55 degrees. And timer, I can't read that, what does that say? 50 um, minutes. 50 minutes, yes. Okay. One hour. Okay, so. We will only leave like a second of this audio in here. Headphone user warning, etc. Uh, Andrew's wearing headphones monitoring this. So we've got a few types of waves. Turn your volume down, I'll demo them. That's one of them, that's full wave. That's semi-wave. You get Andrew. <laughs> and then That's degas where it turns on and off. Okay, so the way this works then is it's creating uh, the small bubbles. They bubble up, hit the surface, explode, and that's supposed to dislodge a lot of stuff. For Vaseline on motherboards, it took several hours to get it clean. I was thinking face it down because I think the bubbles come from, or they just come from everywhere. I think they come from everywhere, but I'm. Why don't you know everything? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to commit to anything. Well, the good news is that with internet comments, you are wrong one hundred percent of the time, no matter how right you are. This is what I have learned. I guess I better make sure there's no air bubbles in there now that I've brought it out into the air. All right. Can you dry that yeah. so it doesn't rust? Okay, so we're going to let this sit for probably a couple hours. And the motherboards with Vaseline took a few days of cycling on and off, but I'm hoping just letting this go overnight should be fine. The biggest problem is just how noisy it is 
will give you a headache if you're nearby. So as long as I'm not in this room, I'll let it run. And then we'll come back and check how it does, uh, how, it's, how it's done after this is all finished. Okay, it's been a few days. Um, we did put the block in the ultrasonic cleaner. We left it running for a few hours. Um, and then we walked away from it because this is what it looked like post ultrasonic cleaning. Um, it seems like it's helped a little bit in the areas right here maybe, but um, we also got some tarnishing on the areas that were fine previously. So kind of a, a mixed bag. Um, Steve's busy producing other content right now. So um, we thought we would take a step back and try something else other than the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, it's really good for cleaning off Vaseline, really good for cleaning off dirt, maybe not so good for cleaning off copper oxide. Um, the detergent we were using is an alkaline detergent. So uh, we looked around a little bit and um, the most common suggestions for cleaning copper or tarnished copper uh, are a mild acid like uh, vinegar or lemon juice. And I tried out both of those on this block and I believe this was lemon juice and this was vinegar plus a little bit of scrubbing afterwards. And both of them work, but the vinegar, we have more of it and it's clear and it seems like it worked a little bit better. Um, so it's gonna be easier to work with. So we're gonna soak this in some vinegar and then come back and then scrub it and then hopefully it's fixed. And if not, we can move on to something else. I stole this out of the uh, storage room and Hopefully Steve is okay with me pouring a bunch of vinegar into it, but he can't stop me right now. <laughs> um, this was like a dollar something worth of vinegar. And actually, now that I think about it, um, we are going to flip this this way. And I know people are going to complain about that because the debris will settle in the block rather than floating off of it, but if I flip it the other way around, there's gonna be bubbles underneath it and I can't do anything about that. So we're gonna leave it like this. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in the chiller cooler that we used with the, <laughs> that we used with the 3175X uh, so that the whole set doesn't smell like vinegar. Um, let me actually carry that over here. It's like a cooking show now. Uh, so we're going to let that sit uh, overnight probably. Um, I don't think we need to let it sit that long, but I want to go home. Uh, so, <laughs> and it shouldn't hurt. It's just vinegar. Uh, it shouldn't hurt the copper. It should dissolve the oxide uh, or at least make it easier for us to scrub it off. So I'll be back tomorrow with Steve to see whether that actually worked. Okay, I don't know where we stopped because Patrick did it last, but either there's a body in there or uh, or the components. Uh, well, I put it in the tub of vinegar and then... You still haven't told me what it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we put it in there and decided we were going to leave it for a couple hours or overnight. Um, yeah. Andrew checked on it and it looked uh, oh, pretty man. promising after like uh, a couple hours. It really, and it smells like, it smells like a middle school uh, science class. <laughs> well, I, after that, I took the day off. So it's been in there for more than 24 <laughs> hours now is where that was going. Uh, and yeah, was... we, we checked on it after a few hours and it already looked good enough. So honestly, like this, this is not a tutorial. This might have been at, at this state after a few minutes. I don't know. It's really warm in there too. It's entropy, I guess. So I don't know. Got, got this humid layer of vinegar whiffiness in there. Yeah, something to put it in. Uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> oh, we have a bunch of these. Yes. Can just rinse it off in here, probably. But I guess let's. Yeah. 
that? Vinegar? It's just white vinegar. Okay. Um, I guess if we do this again, we'll probably use the lemon juice. That seemed like it was a little less effective, but it also smells like lemons and not vinegar. Right. So, so looks a lot better to me. Um, yes. this, this is the side that was black. Um, it was completely black in the out. the chamber here. Other than this was clean, though. Mm -hmm. But the micro fins never really had any gunk in them. So, I mean, that was the upside. Let's splash the camera with this. Help. I'm just trying to wash some of the smell off of it. Um, I don't. But we have a good contrast here because this is, uh, I think I mentioned earlier that we wanted the darkened side up because yeah. there were going to be bubbles under it. This is where the bubbles were trapped under the other side. Oh, it's still dirty. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So this is, yeah. It'd suck if you got that backwards. Got a little bit of uh, yeah. corrosion still there. Um, so we might be able to just rinse that off, actually. So we could scrub that or just pour some vinegar in those spots. Mm -hmm. This is a little green here. I guess that's from the ultrasonic. What is this? Is that a marking? That, uh, I wrote L and V on there because oh, okay. uh, I was scrubbing one side with lemon juice and one side with yeah, vinegar oh, earlier. Um, was there any different between the two? It seemed like the vinegar worked a little better. Um, maybe worked a little faster. Okay. Uh, but it's mostly also clear, so it was a lot easier to see whether it was doing anything. Yeah. Yeah, so this looks way better. I, I don't even know how much it would have affected performance originally. Yeah. <clears throat> But because it was just black, that doesn't necessarily, it's not gunk. So if it's just plated, it should have pretty close to the same thermal conductivity. But I'm not sure what it was doing. So I don't know if it was just plated. Yeah. But with like liquid metal, you'll get, cop, you'll get plating. Uh, and that doesn't really inf impact the performance in a negative way. And it's also a clear block. So yeah. it looks disgusting. <laughs> it looked bad for sure. This, I. It does not look good, I would say. Like, looks more uniform at least. It looks uniform, but it's lost all of that original copper. I don't know if I have one easily accessible, but definitely looks better. So I guess the takeaway is uh, the ultrasonic works great for things like, well, it works a bit on the other side on like a couple spots, but for the most part, like uh, right there, for the most part though, I think the ultrasonic's gonna be better for if there's gunk in there, which there wasn't. Yeah. So gunk or if there's like Vaseline on a board or something like that. So it didn't really work for this application. But uh, yeah, I don't know, white vinegar. <laughs> Acetic acid. Yeah, seems like that's the solution. <laughs> okay. I don't know what we do next. I guess we put it back in the drawer in case we want to use it. Yeah. Because it seems usable. Mm hmm Maybe clean out the other spots a little bit, but looks better. Yeah, now I'm just wiping <laughs> thermal paste on it, so that's not helpful. Well, thanks for watching. Check back for more of this type of stuff on the secondary channel. Um, I guess we'll just kind of put stuff we have to do anyway over here, like this should have been done at some point. So yeah, subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.